About a month ago, I copper modded my RTX 3070 Ti and I got some really, really good results. However, I was also left with a lot of questions. Questions like, how is this going to age over the next 30 days? Will my GPU explode in a fireball because I accidentally made a mistake somewhere? But more importantly, is this a long-term and reliable modification that you can make to your GPU? Today, we're gonna answer all of those questions and more, so stick with me. Now, before we do any modifications to this GPU, let's do some benchmarks to see if the GPU is still performing up to our expectation. And these benchmarks just go to show that even after an entire month of running this GPU, we saw zero performance degradation, which in my book is a huge win for this mod. So what do you say we get to disassembling? So as usual, the first thing to do is to get the card open, and we'll do that by just unscrewing every single one of these tiny little annoying screws. Well, the card certainly looks fine. What is that? Is that leaky, leaky thermal pad juice right there? I did leave the back thermal pads on, as you can see, right along there. Those ones I didn't feel like removing because number one, not necessary. Number two, I kind of don't want to put copper on top of resistors because they will explode. Anyway, let's get this card flipped around and get ready to take the heatsink completely off of the card. This is going to be the first time I am seeing the card in over a month. And I'm super nervous and also kind of excited just to see how the copper has aged over the last 30 to 32 days or so. Okay, we're gonna start getting the top heatsink off now. I'm gonna hold down the memory hub uh, sub heatsink so that it doesn't come off. Give it the little standard wiggle here. Okay, the big reveal in three, two, one. Oh my gosh, yo, look at that, look at that. Okay, that's like, that is incredible. Wow, it looks completely fine. <laughs> okay, I know it sounds like I'm doubting myself here, but this is really exciting. I mean, there was a lot of questions of how would it age in a month then you can see, wow, that still looks good as new. And even after just a cursory glance of the GPU, you could see that everything is completely fine. There's no corrosion, there's no shorted components, and most importantly, this GPU is still in one piece. I will now do what is most arguably the messiest part and remove this sub heat sink with all of the copper shims on it. I don't know how this is gonna come off. It's probably not gonna look too pretty, but it, we will be able to see a more in-depth view of how this shim job has aged over the last 30 days. Okay, I could deal with that. It's not too messy. So you can see the PCB here is just as messy and as goopy as it was whenever I first applied the overload of thermal paste. However, the board looks to be in perfect condition. No shorts, of course, that would have led to an explosive PCB. The Kapton tape seems to have insulated everything fantastically. The shims did not move at all. They were all completely in place, just like they were originally. And I can attribute that to this MX4 paste. It's not super, what's the right word? viscous. However, it does a very good job of holding onto components. Or rather, I should say that the viscosity of it does make it really good for something like this. I will be switching to Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut Extreme because I'm like that. I got the money to spend. Just kidding. <laughs> All of this is a result of YouTube. I have no money. Anyway, let's take a look at the sub heatsink and see how that has held up over these last 30 days. As you can see, it would appear to be in pretty much pristine condition. Now, one thing I want to talk about later in the video, and I think you should stick around for, is the galvanic corrosion that a lot of people were talking about could occur with a copper mod like this. I'm going to tell you why, number one, that's not going to happen, and number two, how you can prevent it from happening in the long term. Honestly, I'm super satisfied with how this has turned out over the last month, and I see little to no downsides to doing something like this for a card that is overheating. I mean, for like, for me personally, this has done wonders. Now, of course, later in the video, I will be discussing the inherent risks that come with copper modding a GPU. That being said, don't do this if you've never replaced thermal pads on your GPU or stuff like this. I'm doing this because I am well versed in how to replace stuff on GPUs. So only do it if you're confident and only do it if you know what you're doing. 
Unfortunately, it would appear that it is time to clean the PCB and remove the copper shims once and for all. They've served me well, but I think it's time for them to go. You thought I wasn't going to keep copper modding it though. Uh -huh, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to replace these shims with this plate from Cool My GPU. It is a solid copper plate and it fits right on the memory just like that. We will most likely get the exact same performance, albeit in a much more compact, nice looking way, which I really appreciate it. So let's go ahead and clean up this board and replace these shims. Now, of course, the first step in any good GPU cleaning is to bathe the GPU in water. And I mean, just douse the, no, 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 no. Okay, I'm, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Don't, don't do that. Do not, don't, do not do that. Anyway, instead of bathing my GPU, I decided to get around to de-shimming the GPU instead. And now comes what is perhaps the most important part of doing any mod to your GPU, and that is going to be cleaning off the dye and the memory. Now versus the last video, I've upgraded to 99% isopropyl alcohol, and I can tell you the difference is literally night and day. I was so surprised to see just how much better 99% isopropyl alcohol actually cleans the GPU. So if you want to make your life like 10,000 times easier, I will have some isopropyl alcohol 99% linked in the description. You can see I just take this 99% isopropyl alcohol and I literally just go to town on the GPU dye and the memory. The good thing about 99% isopropyl alcohol is it dissolves very, very quickly and no, it will not damage your components. It's completely safe to use so long as you make sure to wipe it all off after you're done cleaning. So you can see here that this copper plate simply sits right on top of the memory, similar to what we did, but you can see that it's pretty well in place. It's not going to move or fall off or short any of the components that are around it. As you can see here, we have multiple components all around it, all over the place. These will not be touched by this copper plate. We are completely safe to put it just like that. Now, wait, wait, wait. That being said, I'm still going to put Kapton tape on these interior spots right here. And as well as, actually, I think that's, that's all that I'm going to do. I see that some of these capacitors are a little too high up for comfort. And like that one right there, you can see. And I think that adding Kapton tape will give me the peace of mind to not panic and completely disassemble this card and undo all of my work. Now, before I repaste this GPU, I want to tackle the issue of galvanic corrosion. As some of you may know, if you put copper and aluminum right next to each other, corrosion may form in between and that's simply because they become electrochemically reactive whenever they're in the presence of an electrolyte keyword whenever they're in the presence of an electrolyte so what would be an electrolyte in this situation well you could think of an electrolyte being something like water water and copper and aluminum will not mix and they will form corrosion so you need to be careful whenever you're doing this mod if you want zero galvanic corrosion you can do two things the first and easiest thing is to use a thermal paste like arctic mx4 i chose this thermal paste because it is based on aluminum oxide which forms a layer between the aluminum and the copper which stops galvanic corrosion basically in its tracks. If you are using Arctic MX4 you should see no galvanic corrosion unless you are pouring water on top of your GPU which for the record I do not recommend doing. And number two don't leave your GPU outside. If you've ever noticed copper and aluminum outside you'll notice that there is corrosion and that is number one because of humidity and number two as we said previously because of water. Keep your GPU away from water if you're a water cooling, you probably shouldn't do this mod. Now, with all that being said, I decided to go with Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut Thermal Paste because I'm not in a hazardous environment and there is basically no risk of galvanic corrosion in the long term. Wait, wait, didn't I just say I was going to put Kapton tape on there? <laughs> Gosh dang it. All right, this, this is going to be a little bit messy. I'm going to put the Kapton tape on in these gaps still. Hopefully it's not too much of a messy whack job. We're about to find out. The one thing I can say about Kapton tape is if you're not sure if you should use it, then you should probably use it. It's better to be safe than to be left with an explosion. So this little bit of capped on tape should be covering all the big components that are in the gaps here. That's enough safety for me. We will now simply go ahead and put the copper plate right on top, just like that. Next, we'll just go ahead, get this thing cleaned up real quick. Now you can see that the subheat sink here does not cover the entirety of the metal plate. That of course is not going to be a huge problem. Rather, we will put the thermal paste where the subheat sink is making contact, i.e. just along these edges here. There's no sense in wasting it and putting it over this entire piece of copper because we're not going to gain any heat transfer by doing so. 
It's in this scenario that using one little dollop of thermal paste simply will not work because if there is not adequate contact between the thermal paste and the copper plate, your GPU will overheat. Oh, would you look at that, a wonderful monstrosity. I can tell you what it lacks in looks, it makes up for in performance. So we're gonna go ahead and install this sub heatsink just like so. See that we've made contact everywhere that there needs to be contact, except for right there. I that's not going to be doing very much for you. Our main thing, our VRAM is completely covered. It is going to be completely fine. I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble this card and we're gonna to get to benchmarking. Of course, let's not forget to repaste the core. So you can see that switching to the copper plate with the thermal grizzly paste yielded slightly better results, albeit I don't know if it's enough for me to go out and say buy the plate and buy this $100 tube of thermal grizzly thermal paste. <laughs> yes, I actually spent $100 on this. <laughs> However, there's nothing wrong with gaining a few extra degrees of comfort on my GPU. Now, that being said, this last 30 days of using my GPU with the Copper Mod has yielded no issues, no errors, no problems, and to be honest, I'm really happy with how it's performed. So let me know if Copper Modding your GPU is something that you're still on edge about or if it's something that you're really interested in doing. I really want to know whether or not people would actively try to do this because a lot of people are actually quite frightened by the idea of putting copper on their GPU, which is completely valid. Anyway, I think that's enough rambling from me. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like. If you didn't enjoy the video, well that just sucks, doesn't it? Because YouTube removed the dislike counter. As usual, have a great rest of your day or night and I'll see you in the next one.